Hello, everybody. Today, we're going to be covering how I make 60% or more on my money that's parked. This isn't even my risky money. How I make 60% or more through crypto lending. We're going to cover that in today's show. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm currently doing. I'm going to share my screen and you can see that I'm actually earning this rate right now. We're also going to show a little bit about how to actually move that money to take advantage of it. We're also going to share with you some resources you can review. All that in today's video on how to do crypto lending. And I assume you want to learn about this because you want more time and financial freedom. Now, I hope that's because you're on board with the mission of igniting lives of explosive significance. That's what State of the Spark is here. That's what we're all about. And this channel and our patron and our Discord is all about helping people ignite their lives of explosive significance. Uh, the Discord's free. There's sections of the Discord that you can get access to from the Patreon account. The Patreon account's got exclusive content, live Q&A, so check that out. But really, if you just subscribe to today's show as we get into sharing with you how to make 60% or more on, your, on the money that's just, or crypto that's just sitting around, or money, we're going to cover actually how to do that. Real quick, what is crypto lending? Now, if you're here, you probably have a good idea, but some of you might need a little background on what crypto lending is and is it reliable and where does it come from? In short, there are uh, plenty of, just like in cash, and cash, cash is reliable, especially when we were on the gold standard, gold was reliable. And a lot of people were just holders. They were holders of cash. They were holders of gold. And if you go back far enough, they would put this gold in the blacksmith's safe. The blacksmith was the only person who could make a safe. So the blacksmiths would make safes. The, the citizens would put their gold in the safe because it was safe. And then the blacksmith suddenly realized, you know what? There's a float of money that's always sitting here. Sometimes this person will ask for their cash back or their gold back or that person will. But there's always a certain amount of gold here. What if I lent that to people who needed to borrow gold? Because the risk is relatively low. And you can see where this is going. This is where banking has come from. But just like banking, any other system where there is an asset that has a perceived value, uh, like Bitcoin or Ethereum or gold or USDT, and we'll talk a little bit about that, there are people who want to hold on to it because they believe it has value. But as they hold it, they want to make a little more money. So they ask themselves, can I lend it? And then that creates a market on the other end of people who say, hey, I want uh, I can't get financing for my mortgage. I can't get financing for my car. I'd love to actually get a different type of loan. Where can I get access to loan? And then people start looking and they find, and a market is created actually. In this case, a crypto lending market. So basically a crypto lending market is a lending market that arises out of the supply and demand of an asset of long haulers trying to hold asset and get a return on their Bitcoin or their Ethereum or their cryptocurrencies. And then short-term people who have a demand for that to take a loan on the short-term, and that creates an arbitrage and a spread. And that's kind of where you get crypto lending. This was the genius of Ethereum and smart contracts, and it's the genius of other protocols that are rising quickly, like DAO, which we're going to cover today, DAO. And when people talk about DeFi, all they're saying is that instead of a bank, we have an app and a smart contract and the owners of the app might make a small transaction fee, which is kind of like a bank in a lot of ways. But the deal is between borrower and lender nearly directly. And you're going to see this spread out to real estate soon. I highly recommend, I want to share a screen with you real quick, a screenshot. I highly recommend you check out this book. It's called Thrive, Catching the Spirit of Personal Economics. And this book has been a phenomenal by Frankel. It's really blessed me about 15 years ago. And it talks about how economies arrive, personal economies arrive. And if you're a nerd about making money, if you're a nerd about time freedom and financial freedom in order to make a bigger impact in the world, hello, if you're part of the Spark Mission, if you're about that life, I recommend this book because this is how personal economies come about. I highly recommend you check out Thrive, Catching the Spirit of Personal Economics. I don't have a link for you or anything on that. Just please buy the book. And, it, and Amazon knows the last time I purchased this was in 2000. And nine. I've been buying books from Amazon since 2009. <laughs> so real quick, there's pros and cons to borrowing and getting involved in crypto lending. Number one, the benefits. There can be quick funding. 
You can get funded nearly immediately with no middleman. You don't need to go to the bank. I don't know if you've went to borrow SBA loan money or PPP money recently in the last year or car loans. It's normally a teeth pulling experience. But with crypto lending, you can actually go into that market and pull that money out. And I will show you. I, in fact, I haven't borrowed yet and I should run an experiment, but I've lent and I've made good uh, returns on the lending. And that's what we're going to cover today. And I should go through an experiment of borrowing just to go through the cycle. But the other advantage is there's no credit checks. They're not going to ping your credit score to borrow. So this is what's known as an unsecured loan. Well, that leads us to the cons. Well, because it's an unsecured loan and there's more risk on the lender, and in this case, me or you, <clears throat> there are short repayment terms. Right now, all of my experiments have been on seven-day repayment terms, and then I reinvest that money and reinvest that money. That lowers my exposure just to, to, to just seven days, and I have a 100% payback rate so far. The other thing is that you can also, for borrowers, they can do margin lending. So what's the advantage here? If I can make 60% on my money, why would anyone borrow money at a spread over that? That means someone's borrowing at 70% or God, 80%. Why would they do that? Because someone out there is confident as a day trader or a day crypto trader that they can do margin calls. Basically, they borrow $100 from someone like me. And then the institution, in this case, uh, we'll cover the institution real quick of the app. They can borrow two, three, sometimes 10x that. They can borrow sometimes 10% or a thousand percent of that. So they could borrow a thousand dollars on my hundred. They think they could make a solid trade. They'll pay me uh, $160 back over the period of a year. And they've made their money if they're good and they can actually do what they can do. But that means the drawbacks are, are riskier for the borrower that in a short period of time, they could owe that back in an unsecured way. And last but not least, the drawbacks are borrowing requirements can be high because it's traditionally unsecured. So whether that means that they need to be holding ether or whether that needs uh, means that they need to be having some sort of other asset than a hard fixed asset like real estate or cash in the bank, it's typically real estate. The, the requirements can be a little higher, like I said, shorter repayment rates, but also higher borrowing rates as we're going to cover because I'm making 14% in one account, 20% in another account, and 60% in my most aggressive experiment. So those are some of the pros and cons. So where can you do this? Well, if you don't know by now, it's KuCoin, K-U-C-O-I-N. And I'm gonna share my screen real quick. Let's actually show you this screen. So let's bring that up, boom. So here we go. This is KuCoin and let's just open this in a new tab so you can kind of see what's going on at KuCoin. I've got a link for you down there. One in four of all people working in DeFi or investing in DeFi. And this is the amount I've got in this account. I'm about to open up a whole other account that'll have kind of my private monies, but this is my experiment account to share with y'all. And you can see you've got a, a main account, a trading account and a margin account, and then they have futures accounts and we could talk about that. And right now you can see most of my resources for this account are in my main account because your main account is where you do lending at. And then the trading account is where you temporarily put money to trade at. And there's some security protocols with that. But where you do this is at KuCoin. And check out the link below, but how do you get money from KuCoin or from Coinbase to KuCoin? How do you get money in here? Now, in all honesty, you could just create your account and connect your bank and just fund it. You could just deposit money that way. And also you can open up your Coinbase account and send money there. So what I've done is I've sent Bitcoin, Ether, Cardano, and Ripple all to their corresponding accounts. Now the caveat with transferring money in cryptocurrency is that you wanna make sure you go wallet to wallet. If you send Ether to a Ripple wallet, you'll lose it. But if you send Ether to an Ether wallet, you won't lose it and it's very secure. You just gotta make sure you do that right. So like in Ripple, I clicked send. So I navigated to my assets, I navigated to Ripple and you can see that I transferred 438 Ripple. I sent it over here to my account in my deposit account. So I, I just basically typed in Ripple and I went to deposit Ripple and then I deposited it into my main account 
And it has plenty of warnings because it wants to make sure you don't lose your crypto. Yes, it's got another warning and you click OK. And now it's got the address. So you would just copy the address, drop the address in here, paste. And you do the same with your tag. Then you send the money right over. So <clears throat> that's how you could actually deposit money into your Ripple account. Super straightforward, super easy to do. So that's how you get money over there. You could put money in your Ether and your Bitcoin. And I recommend just moving a bunch of Ether or something over so that you can actually begin to trade it. So if you need a tutorial on how to like move crypto from Coinbase into KuCoin, we can do a whole other video on that. There's plenty of videos on how to move cryptocurrency. I recommend just setting up your KuCoin account, attaching your bank and sending it over. So that's how you move money. And once you get money in there, now you have money to lend. And now that you have money to lend, you got to make sure of a few quick things. So let's actually look at, like I said, you can have money in your trading account. You've moved Ether over. Let's see what we've got in our trading account. In our trading account, we just have some Cardano left over. I was trading Cardano and doing a demo of something else. But let's say you have Ether or let's say you have Ether and you want to trade for US Tether. So then you would just trade ADA to USDT and it's going to bring up a trading screen. And <clears throat> you would just enter your code. So let's do that real quick. Okay, so you've entered the code and now you, what you're doing is, is you're selling your ADA. So you're selling your ADA. I just do a market limit. You could do a, a market order. You could do a limit order if you wanted. And how much ADA? You could say 75% of my holdings, 100%, or you could type in exactly 15 ADA. You click sell, the order would go in and it would trade it. And then you go right back to your assets and you would see, <clears throat> In your trading account, you would see ADA Cardano, and then you now see US Tether, and then you would simply click transfer and transfer this back to the trading account. The main reason is you can't lend money if it's in a trading account. It needs to be in your main account. So I, I misspoke just a second ago. You would move your USDT into your main account. And so that's how money <clears throat> gets moved into your lending account. So this is where we're at right now in our lending account. And this is how we got here. So right now I've got money being lent under finance, under crypto lending. Let's go there. So right now I've got US Tether already trading. Now I wanted to show you this. Let's actually show you. Uh, yeah, we'll stick with US Tether. So they have an auto lending function. You can actually auto lend it, hold a reserve amount. Right now I have this much available. But right now I've got it off and this much is available. The reason for that is in my unsettled account, I've got all of this USDT being borrowed. So I put out under my auto and I put out 800 USDT, basically 800 tether I made available. And I clicked auto lend and the system found borrowers. And the tether market is highly liquid. The reason for that is Coinbase, KuCoin, Binance, all of these institutions use the Tether coin as a stable coin because it's pegged to the U.S. dollar. It matches the U.S. dollar. And they go through a series of buying and burning and creating Tether to make sure it's always at the amount of the U.S. dollar. There's risks to that. There's critiques to U.S. Tether. We'll get into that some other day. But right now, the liquidity is high. There's a lot of lenders. There's a lot of borrowers. And so I make $800 of U.S. Tether available, and it lends all of this out. And it gives me a daily interest rate over so many days. And if you calculate it, and I'll have a spreadsheet for you to download in the patron account for the patrons. Right now, let's look. I've got a zero, a 0.058% daily interest rate. It compounds daily. And so right now, I am making 21% a year compounded. And every seven days, this is going to get either automatically lent or I'm going to check in every seven days. Could the borrower pay me back early? They have 100%. And I got that day rate, but you want that money working for you. So you got to go in every now and again and get it going, or you could just click the auto lend. The auto lend feature is really good if you just want to set it and forget it. I don't recommend you entirely forget it, but you set your re reserve amount. I set $50 as a reserve amount. You say your terms right now. I only have seven day terms and I only want to look at the seven day terms because I want to lower my risk a little bit. 
And then you set a minimum day rate. I look for the lowest and the highest. Right now we've got 20% annualized day rate or 23. I go right down in the middle and I go, okay, 0.061 is my minimum day rate. And then I create enable auto lend and it goes to town. Oh, I need to set a reserve amount. So let's just say I set $25 or whatever. And it's gonna now work for me. And if this person cashes in, then it'll turn around and re-lend that out or redistribute it in a smart way. Super, super powerful program. Right now I've got that off because I'm running my experiments and all of this money is currently working for me. Yep. And this was another amount that I lent out this morning because I made some more money available. And then you can see my order history so that you know I've actually been doing this. I'm not making this up. I've been doing these orders. So I lent 188 and I made that amount of interest depending on how long this went. And I lent this out and I made that amount of interest on uh, this date. And it just keeps compounding. Now this one looks super, super sexy. I lent this out. I got this amount of interest and this was what it netted me. Now, these are small amounts, but over a year, this stuff compounds daily to make up what amounts to, right now, the rates are going at 20%. U.S. Tether's actually been hovering around 15 to 17% annualized day rate. So Grant, you promised me 60%. Let's talk about Dow. Real quick. Uh, I'll tell you about EOS in a second where we kind of failed on EOS, but here we go, Dow Lending. So right now, I am holding this particular coin. Basically, I went through every single crypto, and I saw what has the highest return rates. And right now, as of this minute, it's just under, oh, there, there we go. There's our 60% returns. So I've just now been experimenting with Dow. I started yesterday, the day before, and I did some auto lending. Right now, my auto lending is disabled because I've added more money and it's lending out that money right now. And that's why I've only got 40 available here. <clears throat> so you know about the auto lending features, but I did the same thing here. I set my day rate to be 0.18 compounded daily. And you can see it's already working for me. Now, Now, Dow itself, why does it have such high return rates? Dow itself is a DeFi protocol for crypto lending, crypto finance. And so it's got a bunch of financial mechanisms that are working day and night on with borrowers itself. You can see that I'm actually pulling this right now and I'll be checking this again. It's unsettled. It should mature. If someone goes the full length, it should mature on the 11th and I'll report that. But I also want to report on where we failed with some of our, what experiment failed. And I say it failed because I didn't lose money but it did teach me something about the liquidity of a crypto. So right now, I wanted to leave this up for you. Right now, this is what, when a crypto has auto lending up, what it looks like. And right now this looks like, okay, it's auto lending, it's 0.04%, which I guess on my rates are a little high, except some of these people are trying to lend at 58% a year. I was literally just trying to get 16, 17, 18% annualized return. That's all I was going for here. But as you can see, I've got a canceled account because I had this order sitting in unsettled for several days. And so finally I canceled the account and I'm gonna actually disable auto lending here just like this, boom, because it wasn't filling even after days. And so I looked into it and I realized there's not a lot of relative activity. U.S. Tether has a lot of supply and demand because it's the stable coin used by a lot of these exchanges. EOS is a distributed app and people are using EOS to develop apps on, but the buying and selling, the liquidity, the velocity, if you will, in terms of financial terms, the velocity of that money in terms of the token is actually relatively low and there's not a lot of borrowers. Primarily, my guess is this. A lot of people borrowing are more savvy than me. A lot of people borrowing are probably margin traders and they're, they're trying to really do some technical trading with cryptocurrency and take things to the next level. So they're willing to use Ether, USDT, and Bitcoin because there's plenty of charts, there's plenty of research, there's plenty of technical analysis of those tokens, and there's not a lot of EOS. So going forward, 
I'm actually going to be focusing on U.S. Tether and Dow. If my experiment pays out, I'll update you. But if my experiment pays out, I'm going to keep auto lending in the Dow, DAO, and U.S. Tether and keep these things tiered and cracking. Now, right now, U.S. Tether's high. It's over 20% annualized return, and every seven days, I'm going to keep going with that. That might fluctuate. That might drop down to 15%. It might drive hard. In fact, at one point, U.S. Tether was all in up 30% and 40% annualized return. So I am going to experiment with some ladders. Like if I have $1,000, I might do 100 at a seven-day, another 250 at a 14-day, and another, we'll say, $500 at a 28-day term and see what the payback rates are to make sure I'm getting 100% payback. So far, I have 100% payback rate. And to see how stable it is and if that return compounds any better. Mathematically, it should compound about the same. The risk of the seven days is that I'm not looking frequently enough to make sure my money's working for me and to take advantage of constant compounding. So that is actually how I'm lending at a 60% annualized rate of return compounded. Is it a little technical? Sure. Do you got to move money? Yes. But for... 20% on money that's parked right now, taking this one step further, taking the experiment one step further right now, me and Marissa are discussing, hey, there is going to be a market pullback in the stock market. What of our money should we pull out and just put in reserves? Well, if it's in reserves, why isn't it working for us if we have a relatively reliable way to get well over the less than 1% that we're making in our bank account? Our IRA is making less than 7% a year. And I could be compounding at 10, 15, 30, and sometimes 60%. So I hope you've learned something out of this. Go take control of your finances. Remember, why are we doing this? Time and financial freedom. If you want to talk more about this or get access to other research like this, visit us at the free Discord. Look at the links below. Or become a patron for live Q&As. I'll give you the downloadable spreadsheets and total transparency in our own finances. I'm showing you some of our examples here, but we get absolutely radically transparent in our entire empire building, not just crypto, but real estate, business building, partnerships, and other investments that we're doing to actually create our own empire. And why do we do any of it? And why do I hope you're doing it? Time and financial freedom, sure. To enjoy more of your life, absolutely. But ultimately, to ignite lives of explosive significance starting with your own. Have a great day.